first experience with records? My first experience with records is probably the little 45s. My mother had a record player, which back then was a not just a record player, it was a ginormous piece of furniture that took up half the living room. And you open cabinet doors and I'll pull the turntable and she had some 45s and it was mostly Christmas songs and Christmas albums we used to listen to. My first 45s with some um, couple singles like I, I distinctly remember our, um, Centerfield by, or Freeze Frame, one of the two, by the Jay Giles Band and Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, I Love Rock and Roll, I had that 45. I started playing those on mom's piece of furniture that was this big with the turntable that pulled out. But first started listening to probably her Christmas music. When did you first start collecting records? Unfortunately, only recently have I started recollecting because when I was a kid, I wasn't actually collecting because I didn't know they were collectible because that's the only way we could listen to music was records. And then um, tapes came out, cassettes, and then CDs. So I did have records, and unfortunately, I don't know where they are now. The question was, when did I start? I would guess the new collection has been maybe the last three or four years. So I'm not collecting at a rapid pace at five or six records, but I am into them, and I do enjoy it. So, How many records do you personally own? Personally, as I said, nowadays, I, I, I probably personally lost 50 uh, to time, but, you know, including the 45s, you know, since when I was a little kid, but right now I probably have five or six, maybe. What are your favorite albums to play? Uh, probably classic rock. Um, I have a couple favorite, like, full albums, like one of my Guns N' Roses, the first one that came out, Appetite for Destruction, to me is the best. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Born to Run, Pink Floyd, The Wall, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Bruce Springsteen is live, 75 to 85. So, yeah, as you can tell, I'm mostly a classic rock guy. Except maybe the Prince threw you off a little bit, but love his stuff. He's good. How often do you find yourself playing the records that you own? As often as I can, unfortunately, not weekdays, but the weekends I definitely enjoy it. Sundays is something I like doing. I don't overindulge on TV in the weekends. Uh, because I have more time so I don't waste my time coming home and just crashing on a chair at, you know after work and watching TV so I do like to listen to music on the weekend so that's mostly when I do it what are your opinions on the vinyl record industry making a comeback in recent years I think it's great because I think it's just something different everything kids do nowadays is electronic and the it's on a device this big and now kids are collecting things this big and learning how to keep them clean and uh, they know the importance of keeping them clean so they play correctly and phones can do everything but there's something special about collecting vinyl and playing it and keeping it clean and hearing that crisp sound so I think it's really good for kids nowadays something different for them that they're not you know we were not used to they're not used to what do you think the appeal of records is with the younger generation uh, probably because it is the unknown for them. Like I said, I grew up with it, but it is something different. And I, I don't know. I couldn't honestly answer that. It's just maybe, I'm not sure who started it, but I'm sure it was something they saw on social media and said, hey, that looks cool. And let's try that out. And I don't know. But it's whatever, whatever is making it happen, I, I, I am liking it. And I think it's a good thing. Do you feel that the reason vinyl record collecting is taken part in overconsumption? I do not think it's part of overconsumption. Like I said, I think it's very good for kids to be doing collecting them and playing them and taking care of them and enjoying them and I'm not sure how it could be over consumption because they have to be made by people and people have to sell them that's jobs and I don't think that's anything that's hurting the environment so I don't think there's any over consumption issue with vinyl whatsoever <laughs> start collecting records? When did I first start? Well, probably when I was a, a teenager in the mid to late 60s. Bought records like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones like everybody did back then. What are your favorite albums to play? Well, my tastes have changed a bit. I still like the Beatles because they're good writers. Um, but I gravitated towards less rock and more sort of jazz fusion in my later years. And I still like classical music. 
and I still like some rock, but I'd probably I would have to say more of the jazz fusion style. Mm. So like any particular albums or just genre? Uh, well, that genre, and there's a few people that I really like. There's many. I mean, off the top of my head would be, say, Chick Corea, uh, my favorite piano player and um, musician overall, is a uh, place with the Pat Metheny group. He passed away recently, but his name is Lyle Mays, excellent piano player, one of my favorites. What is your first experience with records? My first experience? Um, well, again, back in the 60s, um, that's when they first came out with cassettes, and we also had record players, but um, so some of us would buy records, and then we'd record them on cassettes so that the other person didn't have to go out and buy the record. But I always like having the album because, and I like it much better than CDs and uh, just digital music, because the album usually folds open, and it's got a list of all the songs, all the lyrics, which was great when I played in bands because all the lyrics were there, we didn't have to copy them down ourselves. And, um, and they had pictures of the people and what they played and what equipment they used. It was a lot more information. And for those of us that were in the music business at the time, uh, that, was, that was great. We loved, I used to sit and while we listened to the record, we'd have that album open and uh, just read all the information. How many records do you personally own? Well, if I put them all together, because I've had two different collections, if I, I gave away a lot of things that I wish I hadn't given away because my music, uh, musical taste changed. But if I did give them away, not a real lot, maybe 200. Now I probably have maybe 120, 125. What are your opinions on the vinyl record industry making a comeback in recent years? I think it's great. Um, vinyl started to fade away and CDs came in to play in, say, the, eight, yeah, the mid-80s, late-80s. Uh, the CDs were great, but they, again, they were smaller form factor. They didn't have all the information on it, but they still had some, and some of the CDs had the little fold-outs. And then when it went to digital, you have none of that. But now, uh, and I'm glad to see it coming back, and I'm glad to see a lot of young people uh, having it come back in their lives because they're able to now open it up, read all about the people, especially you know the popular ones like Taylor Swift. You, you want to see all the photography, you want to see all the lyrics to the songs, and um, I, I just think it's it's a much be better presentation, you know, than um, than just digital. It's great to hear it, but then you don't have anything in your hands either. And I still have a record collection that dates back to the 70s, and uh, I can always reminisce, pull it out, and I still have my original Phillips turntable upstairs. I haven't had it out for a long time, but I can still do that, and I can still, it brings back memories for me, but digital, the digital world doesn't do that. CDs are sort of holding their own, but they're not as prevalent as they once were. A lot of people are going with the vinyl, so I think it's a good thing, you know. It's like bell bottoms coming back. <laughs> what do you think the appeal of records is with the younger generation? Well, like I said before, um, you're going to have it, you know, when you're older, like me, you'll be able to pull it out of the closet and you'll be able to look at it. You'll be able to remember where you were when you first bought it. And um, it's like having an album, you know, a photo album. If, you, if it's just digital, you're going to forget about it eventually and you'll, you'll, you'll lose all those memories. So it's, that's what you'll have. You'll have some, a keepsake forever. Do you feel that the recent vinyl record collecting is taken apart in overconsumption? I don't think so. It's entertainment. And it's something you'll have. I don't think it's over-consuming at all. As I said, I've, I've got albums that are 50, 55 years old in there. And uh, after I finish this interview with you, I'm probably going to pull the box out and look through them all again. Well, I've got here my scrapbook that I've had since... Uh, 1972, and I've saved or tried to save every concert ticket that I ever went to, and I put it in this scrapbook here. I'll just uh, pick out a couple, tell you about them. Um, first up here is one of my favorite piano players, Keith Jarrett. I saw him at Symphony Hall um, in September of 2000. You can go back to the early 70s. I have one where I paid uh, $4 to see a concert, a lot different than 
these days. Uh, let's see, Pat Metheny group, one of my favorite groups, and uh, my favorite piano player, Lyle Mays. Um, I saw them in 1980, $7.50 I paid for that one. Several here from Great Woods, I saw Chicago, Little Feet, Bruce Hornsby, Keith Jarrett again. Oh boy, brings back some memories. Thank you. 